What's up, guys? This is Coach Alex in Better Daily. We are diving into our third workshop for the Faithful 40 Challenge. And tonight we'll be talking about better mindset. And in our Faithful 40 Challenge, we roll through better exercise, better nutrition, and better mindset every time. But each time we have a little bit of a, a different spin on the topic. And so this evening, we'll be talking specifically about the growth mindset in relationship to our belief systems and how we would create good mindsets each day that will make a change for us in how our food and how our exercise and even how our mood goes throughout the day. So I'm excited and I've got a couple of you guys live with me this evening. And if you're catching the replay, let me know what stood out to you. So here we go, ladies, we are diving into our agenda. So uh, we're gonna do an overview of better mindset, what that actually means and what that's been, uh, been happening in the Faithful 40. And then where does our mindset and belief fit into the science of health and fitness? And then we'll talk about the growth mindset specifically. And this is actually, it's not just something, you know, that marketing textbook guys like to write about. This is actually some hard science that we've looked into from an education perspective, from a psychological perspective, and even in the treatment of, of mental disorders like depression, seasonal depressive disorder, and anxiety. So that's, that's really powerful. And then we're going to talk tonight, you can call this like a, a bonus ad, we're going to talk tonight about our second brain, which is in our gut, and that'll be a fun conversation because we're just starting to learn about that. And when I say we, I mean the scientific community. So First, mindset. I'd, I'd love to hear how this has challenged you. Now, uh, Janet, I haven't gotten to see your Faithful 40 post much in the group. I know, Katie, I, I, I would almost, no, no, no worries. You, you've, you had to learn how to deep sea scuba dive. Like, that's yes. important. <laughs> but <laughs> the, uh, uh, Katie, I would almost say you're, you're kind of our mindset guru in the Faithful 40 group, even though you wouldn't call yourself that. Uh, a lot of people find what you have to say inspirational and helpful. And I kind of, I enjoy watching that pepper into other folks' mindsets every morning because you beat us all. Like you, you like five o two a.m. You're like, haha! Before the email comes out, I've got his mindset. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, so, thanks for that. Um, but I, I would love to hear how this piece has challenged you, or what the the idea of journaling your mindset every day, starting the day with an intention and saying, "This, this is the mindset I'm bringing today. This is the the mantra, or the verse, or the song, or the word." or even just the, the thoughts that I'm bringing into the day. How has that challenged you? And, and have you noticed anything different about doing that during the Faithful 40 Challenge? I will tell you that I look forward to doing it. Um, there's usually like two or three intentions or mindsets or because I generally, my, my, um, habit is to uh you know i get up really early probably about 3 30 or 4 uh mm. and then that's when i do my praying and reading and mm -hmm. so um get ready go to work and when i get to work usually right around five that's when everything has been able to kind of stew a little bit in my head and so i have several ideas and so it's always fun for me to kind of say, okay, well, you know, how, how, how do I feel right now? Um, mm. and, and that's usually where it comes from. And that's, that's how I, I guess the challenge would be, um, because some days, you know, you might just not feel very positive. Uh, that's why we're <laughs> talking mindset. I was looking forward to this, it, it, but you know what? If you just stop and think about it and breathe, something will come to you. Mm. Thanks for sharing that. I appreciate it. And, and how do you, if you don't mind me asking, when you have that cloud of thought, like probably in my mind, I've got like three or three to five things I could probably type out from a mindset perspective. How do you put your finger on the one and you say, hey, that's the, that's the one I'm going with today? Because yours are always so simple and succinct. It's not like you know, mine could be like a paragraph or two long because I just hadn't decided which one I'm going to go with. So I'm just going to go with all of them. Like, you're like, all right, I got this one word. Like you see it right here, mindset, all is well, no matter what unfolds this day, all is well. And mm -hmm. that's the one you settled on. That's super simple, but also very powerful. How, if, if you don't mind me asking, how do you put your finger on that sort of thing? You know, it, 
I just ask myself, how do you feel after what I've read and what I think about or listen to on the way to work? Because it's about a 30 minute drive. Mm. And a lot of the times it's just, it'll be something I heard and it just stays with me. Like Mm. this morning was all is well. And I was going, you know what? Mm. No matter what, all is well, because it's the way it's supposed to be. And so I'm good with that. All is well. Love it. Thanks for that. I, I appreciate you. Um, now, Jana, I know that you haven't been in, engaged in the mindset journaling of the Faithful 40, but I also know somebody like yourself who successfully rolls about their own personal health and fitness. You, mm. I'm sure you do something like this in the morning. How does that usually Definitely. go for you? Uh, I start, the first thing I'll do is start with Bible verse. Um, so like this morning, I just loved it because it was iron sharp and iron. And, you know, that just spoke to so many different areas of my life right now, you know, because, uh, you know, it's, it can be just really hard to be making decisions and things like that. And I thought, you know, it was just such a great thought of, mm. you know, looking for, you know, the people that are, you know, knocking the edges off. And, and you know, I'm a very, very social, I'm very outgoing, I'm a very social person. I know you're shocked. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so for me, working out is... Um, I have a couple workout partners. So like, you know, tomorrow morning I'll go running with my running buddy tonight. I, you know, I was like stuck on zoom calls and my lifting buddies, like I'm going to the gym, hang up, get your butt over here, you know? And <laughs> so, nice. so it's like that, you know, that to me is what helps me to be, you know, um, to keep going is because mm. I have people that push me and I push them. And I recently got strength coach because he was helping me with the shoulder stuff and he, you know, competes professionally and stuff. So like, you know, I'll run into him at the gym and, you know, I know that he's going to yell at me if I'm doing something wrong, you know, <laughs> so, mm. I mean, he's a good yeah. guy, but you know, so for me having that and my daughter might go off a walk with me or, you know, so from, from a health pr- perspective, having people in my life that, um, that that's important to is mm. really really a big motivator for me um and then you know on top of that i'll try to get that self-discipline in also but you know people mm. say you're so del- self-disciplined i'm like now i've just built a social life around my working out and you know or you know i have a organic farm close by that you know i can go get organic vegetables and things like that you know and it's a co-op so i'm there every week and so it's in the fridge i'm eating it you know, um, so I found for myself to put those things in that work for me, mm. my personality, I know what my weakest weaknesses are, I know what my strengths are. So, um, you know, I try to put things in there that will actually, you know, translate into good results um, instead of just constantly trying to beat myself up, for, you know, not being able to stick to something real rigid because it's just not, you know, it's not what works for me. <laughs> I, I love that. One of the things I heard from what you said was that the, the process of, of kind of propping up your mindset on a day-to-day basis has taken a, a while to build. Like it's taken time to build the structures that, that support, you know, even if you're not feeling it today or whatever, it's like, yes. well, the, what produce do I have in the refrigerator? It's not like it's not like I have a bunch of other crap, you know, <laughs> that's in there. And, we, and my daughter and I have no junk in the house. So that's the only thing that keeps us from eating junk. <laughs> we have no right. junk in the house. <laughs> and I, I used to, as a, as a trainer working in a, a corporate fitness facility, one of the things my clients would say to me pretty often was, if I didn't have this appointment scheduled with you, I wouldn't have come today. Like, yes. you know, because, you know, the end of the day, it's, you know, got sure. plenty of other things going on, but, but I had this appointment. So I have an obligation. I, I, yes structured my day such that there really isn't an option unless I'm like sick or dying in a ditch or something like that. Um, so yeah, I love that. Thanks for sharing that, Janet. Um, You're welcome. That's I've learned what works for me. I mean, we literally fall into the gym half the nights and just like, you know, my, my lifting partner is 62 and, you know, and we're both in good shape for our age and, you know, but mm. the thing is we come falling in, we both look like the day just ran us over. And by the time we're done, we're like, we're so glad we came. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> look like I, your, your post-workout now, you don't look like the day ran you over. So it's doing something for you. That's good. 
I did when uh, I got also, there. <laughs> uh, you're right. Could also be the lighting. Um, now I've got uh, Pat and, and usually his sidekick, Miss Lisa. I say sidekick. He's probably her sidekick. Um, do I have you guys on? And would you like to tell us a little bit about how the, the mindset journaling has challenged you this Faithful 40? Um, hey, how you doing? It's Lisa. Hey, what's up, Lisa? Right. Oh, not much. Been a long day. We're on our way back from Nashville. So, um, oh, just, you got uh, to visit your son today. Um, well, we had a, Pat had a doctor's appointment, but yeah, we mm. did get to visit Sean and have lunch with him and and uh, hang out with him for a bit. So that was awesome. But, um, cool. Yeah. So, um, mindset, I would say for me, it, I mean, mine kind of revolves just around my how I'm feeling, my moods, or even um, a lot of times, it, like if I'm reading a devotional or reading some Bible verses, it, something just kind of jumps out at me, and and it's like, okay, yeah, this is my mindset for today. So, um, mm. so I, I mean, I, and usually it it does have to do with my moods or you know it's like the sun's out or you know whatever and then something just jumps out at me that I um I feel like okay this is my mindset for today yeah mm. so, yeah cool I love it and Pat is our uh our our resident bible poster like I don't think he posts mindsets that aren't a verse like <laughs> I could be wrong but I, I don't know if you can hear me, Pat, but thank you. I appreciate them very much. It's like a second devotional yes. in my day. I like that. <laughs> well, I appreciate you. It, uh, and I, I'll jump in just for a second. I, uh, a lot of times, because I get up, I, in the mornings I'm up and it's, it's quiet. So I, I try, and if it's not Bible, I, you know, you know, I like to read the Stoics or, you mm. know, I, I try to find something that, that challenges me and, and gets me to, I don't know, kind of refocus, you know, because a lot of times I'll wake, you know, if you wake up or if you didn't sleep well at night, you've got, you know, you've got some of that leftover angst or whatever. So it gets me to get recalibrated and focused on the day and, and I think kind of put everything in context. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks. I, I really do. I'm, I'm not just saying that. I really do appreciate your mindsets. Uh, each, each of you guys, as you, you share them, they impact me positively as well. I know, I know for me, the biggest challenge for me, kind of as I was asking Katie, is is putting my finger on on you could almost call it the intention of the day. Right. Like what do I what do I want to hold on to today given what I have planned ahead of me, you know? And then one of the nice things about doing it in a group setting is like, I don't want to have a dumb one, you know, like I don't <laughs> Like, um, no, I'm not kidding. Sometimes you wake up and you're like, ah, man, I'm not feeling today. And if, if I didn't have to share it with anybody, my mindset today is like, I don't know, blah. Like, <laughs> and, you know, it's a pre-coffee mindset. Um, and I haven't, I haven't gotten to hang out with God yet. I'm still kind of groggy. And, you know, I know I have a lot on my plate today. And maybe Bennett's crying when I first wake up, which is always fun, waking up to a crying baby at 5 a.m. Um, but <laughs> like, go back to sleep. You're just going to be angry all day. So, so the, the journaling and connecting and, and saying, Hey, this is something that not only am I making an intention for myself, but I'm going to share this. And I hope that if anybody else is in a rough spot, that this is powerful for them too. Like, you know, I, I would like to be able to put my best foot forward, not only in my own mind, but also in the group and, and don't worry, I'm not blowing smoke at you guys. Like the mindset I settle on and what I write down, that's what I'm at today. Like it's, it's truly there, but at the same time, you know, if you ever see my about as negative as you'll see from me is like feeling really stubborn. Like that's, <laughs> that's, that's my, that's my default backup mindset when things aren't okay. It's like, all right, well, fine. Like my head down, nose to the grindstone. And that's actually biblical. Uh, Isaiah says, and he set his face as a flint, meaning like, you know, the, the countenance was stony to deal with what needed to be dealt with um, in front of him. So anyway, that's, that's generally my default. I don't know if that's the best way to go about things. Uh, the New Testament has a lot more to say about how gracious, loving, and kind I should be meditating. But sometimes that's not always the forefront. I'm working on it. So 
Thank you guys for sharing that. I, for me, this is, this was an unexpectedly powerful part of the Faithful 40 Challenge when we first did it in March. I knew mindset was an extremely important part of everybody's health and fitness journey. I know it's been a powerful and important part of mine. I honestly thought that when we did our first Faithful 40 a year ago, that, that you know, people would get a lot out of journaling their food and journaling their exercise, which, which has been the case. But continually, when I ask folks, what's been the most valuable part of this for you? What was helpful or powerful? And they're always like, like journaling my mindset every day and reading other people's mindsets just changed my outlook on the day. And it was really helpful and, and good for me. And in fact, when the Faithful 40 ends, a lot of people ask, can I keep doing that? Like, can I, can I just keep, can I keep putting that out in the world? Which you can, like, it's your group too. You can do what you want. Um, as long as your mindset doesn't suck. I'm just kidding. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, like it's, it's, it's good. And so tonight I want to talk about some of the science of that, but also some of the, the structures and practices of, of powerful mindsets that, that help to move us because there is some science to this. I think it's very fascinating. So, so first this is a little elementary. Uh, forgive me, I'm teaching a five-year-old in homeschool, but this is some uh, an exercise that he and I go through, and it's something that I work to reinforce regularly for him. And I know you guys aren't five, but even as an adult going through this with him, it's coming out of my mouth, and I'm going, "Oh wow, like, like this is <laughs> dad. Dad better check his words here and make sure that." that in the daytime, I'm, I'm modeling this as well. So this is a very, very simple infographic, but it's the idea of a growth mindset. And a growth mindset is, is the, the scientific term that is in opposition to what's called a fixed mindset. So we're going to talk about what this has to do with your health and fitness in a second. But, but this is important because a fixed mindset is, is all of the thoughts associated with running up against an obstacle and, and feeling as though you are incapable, like it's bigger than you. Like you, it's, imagine that you, you've come up to a mountain and it's a very large mountain and you're like, that's a big mountain. I'm not even gonna mess with that mountain, right? And so that's the left column, right? That's the, I can't do it. I'm no good at this. It's, it's good enough. I don't need to do anything else. Um, it's too hard. I'm afraid of making a mistake. They're, they're better than I am. I don't know how. I can't make any of this better. You know, just, just to put a, a nice light in your evening, I'm reading all these terrible mindsets. Don't let it stick in your mind because I'll read the good stuff in a second. But, but a fixed mindset is in opposition to the growth mindset. It means that I am an entity that does not grow, does not change, right? And I know you guys know better than that, but it's very simple to be in that headspace. Has everybody been there at least twice in the last week? Like, <laughs> like you come up against something, you're like, I'm just not enough, or I'm never going to figure this out. This is stupid. My, my actual physical, my, my physical way of saying this is dropping a pencil or dropping a pen, like, forget it. <laughs> yeah. Done. Like, forget that. Um, usually, usually I pick it back up and that's good. But, but the growth, growth mindset, from a scientific perspective is, is literally just rewording the, the idea of the obstacle in the form of a challenge that you can rise to meet. And that's, that's a really interesting thing because it's not just a change in your words. It could start as a change in words, but it's actually something that can sit in your mind. Did anybody see Inception, Leonardo DiCaprio, mm -hmm. maybe? It was very interesting. I, uh, well, the, the idea of the movie was that you could invade somebody's dream state and steal their ideas. That like, you know, safe codes to the, to all the gold bullion in Italy or something like that. Uh, kind of fun. But, but what happens in the movie is, is the most powerful thing you could do in somebody's dream state is to insert a simple idea that changes everything about the way they think. And what's, it's a, it's a strange movie. I, I wouldn't recommend it to everybody, but, um, but that actually can happen in our own lives. And each of you who talked about your mindset talked about how in the morning, it was extremely important to you to get connected with words that you felt were powerful and good for you. 
because no matter what state you woke up in or what you're dealing with today, if you could just get that one idea, that one word, that one phrase, that one, that one sentence, that one paragraph, if you're Pat, um, if, if you could get that thing stuck deep down inside of you, maybe it will, maybe it will permeate out. Maybe it will change the way you think today. And so that's the, that's the idea of the growth mindset is, is flipping that, that scenario where you see the mountain and it's way bigger than you. And you look at it and say, well, maybe one step at a time, maybe, maybe one step at a time. So on the, on the right, uh, I'm still learning. I'll keep trying instead of, I can't do it. I'm, I'm still learning. I'll keep trying. Uh, what can I learn to get better at this? So maybe there's a skill you haven't acquired yet that would make this better. If you don't know how to walk, a mountain is a very big thing to deal with. My, you know, my, when Bennett was one crawling up the hill was not a, not a thing. We didn't do that much better now that he can walk. Is this the best that I can do? This is asking yourself the question, like, have I given this thing my best shot yet? With more practice, it'll get easier. Uh, mistakes are how I learn and get better. Amen. <laughs> what can I learn from these? I can learn how I can always find a way to improve challenges, make me better and I'll try a different way. And there's some things that aren't included in, on that list. Uh, so I, I kind of included those over here because I, I think this kind of speaks to a, a wider piece. A growth mindset is like, you know, I, I'm not a fixed entity, I can grow. That's a, good, that's a good place to start. But even further than that, if like Janet was talking about, if you've constructed your life and spent some time investing in relationships and other people have invested in you, then you're not the only person in that circle, right? I mean, you're not the only person in that circle. So um, you, could, you could ask, and I put these to the right here. I wonder what, and you could insert person that you admire. I wonder what they would do. Sometimes if, if there's somebody you admire and they're still alive, you can ask them, which is pretty cool. Um, I remember when I was eight, the little little wristbands, the WWJD, what would Jesus do wristbands were really popular. And one of the reasons that caught on was that's a, that's an archetype. It's, it's looking at somebody you admire and trying to embody that person and approach your situation as if they would, would do it. Um, some of my clients would say that they have a little, they have a little me on their shoulder as a trainer, like kind of talk is, I know that's weird, but that's my, that's my strange manipulative goal is to put a tiny version of me on your shoulder when you work out. Um, and so, so that, that, so that the little tiny version of me says, <laughs> you can do more weight. <laughs> that, that wasn't your best, that wasn't your best set. Keep your head up, keep your shoulders down, breathe, and do it again. Um, and so anyway, that I wonder what insert person you admire would do is, is, a, is a really powerful way to switch that, that fixed mindset to a growth mindset. You could also ask yourself, how have I felt this before? Because many of the times that we face an obstacle, it, it's, it might be a new obstacle, but it brings us to a feeling that we've already had before that we don't like, right? Maybe we come across a problem at work and we really have no idea how to handle it. We've been in that place before. Like, I have no idea how to handle this. You We've been like in that now? place before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm, I'm sorry if you're there, but yes, exactly. I, I have no idea how to handle this, right? You could ask yourself, have, have I felt this way before? How did it go? And how have I changed since then? Right, because chances are you're, you're a different beast now. And what's really cool about it is if, if you're still here and you felt this way before, it didn't kill you, which is really good. And I know that sounds crazy, but it's, it's extremely important. I know the problems that we face in a day don't usually kill us, but the, the physiological effect of a fixed mindset is the same as, as running from a mountain lion. It's the same, same kind of mechanism. And our, our body doesn't know how to, to judge the difference. And so things feel overwhelming. You want to fight or fly or whatever. And well, you can't run from work problems very well they, they just kind of linger <laughs> or get bigger um so uh, another question is am i willing to give up why not am i willing to give up why not uh, this this for me was a really important part of my story wrestling with ehlers danlos 
it's something that I grew up with and something that I found out about and had to wrap my head around and stuff. And at some point you get to a place where you're like, okay, this is what I'm dealing with. Am I willing to shrivel up and die here or not? And if not, why not? What, what am I doing here? Or, or you face a job. Are you willing to walk out the door? You know what? Forget it. Like forget, forget this whole thing. I know some of you have fantasized about walking out the door of your work, but um, we've even talked about it. But it's not, if you're not willing to give up, why? And, and that can really help with the, the growth mindset thing as well. And then something kind of on, on the same note, that last one there is, is what am I fighting for? And this is, this is important at, in a workspace as well. So for instance, let's say you have faced a problem or you are facing a problem that you don't have an answer to. Sometimes the answer that you're looking for comes from why you're addressing the problem to begin with. And, and that growth mindset can be really helpful. So I know that infographics kind of kiddish, but I don't, I don't care how old you are that sort of switch never gets old. Uh, and I could tell you a story about fixing my garage door in a second if you guys would like to hear about a little bit of comedy here because I can lighten things up. But uh, before I do, does anybody have any comments or, or questions around this particular topic? Because I wanna talk about the science in just a second, but, but this practice right here, if you don't take anything else away from tonight, I know it's probably something you've done or wrestled with before, but if I'm speaking it to you, maybe it'll be a little easier. Um, or at least you have another voice on your shoulder. There's me putting my voice on your shoulder again. You got a growth mindset. You can do it. Uh, what uh, comments or questions has this brought up for you? Also, Hi. Robin, good, good to see you, man. Glad you're here. Sorry, Jana, I didn't mean oh, to Oh, that's fine. You. No, I just, it's funny today when it was iron versus, you know, sharpens iron. Um, I just realized that, you know, because I'm constantly, it's, it's a really challenging work situation like most people are in. And, you know, a friend of mine, you know, spoke, spoke into my life, something unexpected. And it was, you know, when you seen a verse like that and all of a sudden something unexpected comes from an angle that you didn't, you know, didn't expect to hear it from, it really is impactful because you really feel like, wow, maybe the Lord's sending it you know, mm -hmm. to me to think about, you know, um, and so that's one thing that I like about the mindset is that sometimes you, you're more mindful to recognize things that, that come along and not just blow it off and not just, you know, dismiss it. It makes mm -hmm. you think um, like, oh, maybe this is something I should be giving some thought to. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, those, that's, that's what helps me is, you know, when I see something like that in the morning and then something else comes on unexpected, it makes me feel like maybe that's, you know, something I should be paying attention to. Yeah. It's almost like it shows up in your life, like with a light around it. Right. It's like, oh, like <laughs> for, for just a brief second, the, the heavens open up and say, that's what you should have listened to. Yes. Don't forget it. <laughs> yeah. So it was, um, it was just neat. It was, you know. It's just a, a neat moment. So. Mm. Kind of on that note, have you guys ever had the experience where that happens to you a couple of times, but you don't notice until it happens like three or four times? And then you're like, oh, wow, look at all the other times I should have noticed that particular um, signal. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Time. I, always, I always feel real dumb when that happens. I'm like, wow, like, <laughs> yeah. come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right i got you i I'm, I'm slow at first but i got you yeah i think god does that a lot and we just don't realize that it's him mm. oh yeah <laughs> yeah awesome um this this is actually something that we've studied pretty extensively uh, we're we're learning more about this from a physiological perspective but from a performance perspective, we know that this is the case. So what you're looking at is actually uh, a large scale study done in a uh, school system of, of kids on their math tests. And so what they did is they, they put the kids in two groups, which kind of, it kind of stinks that, you know, the other poor kids had their grades affected because it turns out that, you know, one system's not a very good way of doing things. But what they did is, is in these studies, 
they test the children's performance in a particular subject matter with the graphs you see in front of you came from math specifically. And then what they do is over a period of eight weeks, they, one group of kids, they praise their intelligence. They say, wow, you're so smart. Way to go. Like that, that's amazing. Like you're doing so great. And then with the other group of kids, they praise and encourage their diligence, their hard work, right? Their practice. Like, wow, you, you're, your hard work's really paying off. Or when, when you practice like that, you're doing amazing things, right? Keep up the good work, that, that sort of thing. So there's the intelligence. And, and the trainer corollary to this would be me in a session with a client saying, gosh, you're just so strong. Like, wow, just great strength. Awesome, awesome strength. Great endurance. Keep that up, you know? On, on the other hand, there's there's the, wow, I saw that effort there, fantastic set, keep up the good work, right? Uh, or, wow, I know that was difficult, but if we keep practicing, the, you can't even imagine how easy this is going to be um, if you keep this up, right? So so there's there's a completely different mechanism in the brain that, that receives uh, praise, encouragement, support that is, is contingent on traits that you have no control over. Like you don't get to control how smart you are, mm-hmm. you know, like your, your IQ, your intellectual quotient, how fast you process information. Like you're, you're kind of stuck with that computer chip. There's a few things you can do to really mess it up. Like don't exercise, don't get enough sleep. Um, I don't know, eat a lot of mercury. <laughs> you can do a lot of things to, to, to mess it up, but, but there's not a lot you can do to make it better. So when somebody praises your intelligence, I mean, unless you're, unless you're like seven, you're like, yeah, I am really smart. Like by, by this age, we've all gotten to a point where like, I mean, thanks, but <laughs> I'm not, I'm not that smart. Um, so praise on a trait that you have no control over. It, like if you guys were like, man, Alex, your beard, like so good, so good. And I, like, I'm going to feel good for like 10 seconds. I'm like, man, my beard's so good. I don't have any control over this thing. Like it just grows the way it's going to grow. Uh, but, but if your encouragement and your focus and your support is on the actual things that you can control, like the actual things that you can bring to the table, the actual things that you can, you know, nose to the grindstone deal with every day, then what actually happens is not only do you grow, but you grow considerably more than, than those who are praised for, for other things. And, and this is what they're, they're looking at in kids. What's relevant to us here is in the, in the faithful 40 space, I don't know if you'll notice when, when I comment on, on somebody's nutrition journal or exercise journal or mindset, I'm very careful to say, like, I see your good work here keep up the good work like I, I imagine that was difficult to come to that's that's awesome you know great job not like Katie you're so smart I wish I was smart as you about you know saying that all is well today you know and I mean don't get me wrong I think you're pretty cool but but that's that's a deep part of it because you do the same thing to yourself like the fixed mindset is the same thing it's one thing to look in the mirror and say man how could you be so stupid as opposed to like, like, well, that didn't work out the way you planned, did it? <laughs> there's a there's a difference between those two self criticisms. Does everybody understand what I'm saying here? Like, there's mm-hmm. there's a difference between those two. And part of a growth mindset is is knowing what's praiseworthy, and also knowing how to give yourself constructive criticism. Because constructive criticism doesn't tear you down and make you feel retarded. Constructive criticism is, is something that will, it, it, it's inherently encouraging to receive at the same time. We used to call it a crap sandwich in the managerial world. Like if I have something bad to tell you, I'm going to tell you something good about you and then, you know, something not so hot. And then we're going to, we're going to finish off with how I know you can do it. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> at, le- at least it's not just, at least it's not just a crap meeting. Right. So I, I've said a lot of things here, but but this is science that we're we're just beginning to understand how it affects us in adulthood, not just childhood. Like you know, math scores, a little bit of tutoring, and we can get your math score up, no big deal. But when we're talking about years of having to wrestle with you, you know being your own worst enemy in your head with with real world problems, that has real world ramifications. Um, 
So anyway, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the health and fitness side of things, but I think this is a relevant time to bring up Katie's specific question, unless there's a, another question out there before, uh, before we do so. So uh, Janet, Robin, Pat, and Lisa, does this bring up any questions for you about growth and fixed mindsets and some of what we're finding in the research right now? It makes sense, right? Like you, you see this in front of you and it makes sense, All but, right. but it's, it's also some, it seems like such a small thing, right? Like, look at these, yeah. look at these, uh, it's, it is, it's, it's overwhelmingly yeah. huge, but it, you know, two words, like you're so, or sorry, three words, you're so smart versus you're so hardworking and, and look at these graphs, like, <laughs> like that's, that's intense. That's intense. As a dad, this sort of stuff eats me up. Like I've got a five-year-old and a two-year-old in the house and every once in a while something comes out of my mouth and I'm like, oh, like don't put them on the orange line. Yeah. <laughs> Come I on, man. Tell the, I used to tell the kids with sports, um, you know, because I'd have friends be, yeah, you know, my, my son's just, he's a huge kid. So, you know, he did a lot of sports and stuff. He's like six, five and just a wall of a kid. And they're like, oh, you must be so proud. And I always used to say, I'm proud of their effort. I'm happy when the results are good because mm -hmm. I'd much rather a, a kid consistently put forth the effort, even when things aren't coming out the way they want them to. And mm -hmm. so I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be like, oh, I'm so proud you won. I'm like, I'm proud of your attitude. I'm proud that you stuck in there. You know, I'm proud that you didn't. <laughs> just, mm, right know. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it, it's and it's recognizing all the small things that added up to the big thing right like yeah it, like I, then, I could say oh sorry go ahead oh I was just gonna say they were there to learn those lessons I mean you know it's fun to win but at the end of the day I had them in sports to learn the discipline to learn the good sportsmanship to learn how to work hard to learn how to work in a team you know, that's why you're in sports and, you know, mm. to stay physically fit and to you know, get your butt off the couch, you know, so it's like, you know, the win is fun. That's awesome. You know, we, we all love it when we get the win, but like the reason I had them in sports was for those other reasons. Mm. And so. I think sports does, does something that kind of puts this in a really concrete manner. You know, it's like one thing to say, oh, I'm going to have a growth mindset at work which, which is good. I think it, we should, and I'm going to have a growth mindset with regard to my relationships, right? How easy is it to like somebody you're close to, you're like, ah, that's just the way they are. And this is just the way I am, you know, like everybody gets all entrenched in their, the way they are, as opposed to saying, Hey, they're doing the best they can, you know, hopefully they get better. And Hey, I'm, I'm doing the best I can. Here's, here's all the ways I was an idiot in this situation. And here's all the ways I would like to be better. You know, if I come out and say that it makes things a little easier, but, but in sports, what's really cool about sports is like, you have the big win, right? Like you can win the game, you can score points, you can win the race, like you can do that, but you're not going to do that unless you have done all of the little things up until that point that resulted in this, this win. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons as a, as a professional, I, I love exercise so much. Like you can't, you awesome. don't get to game the system. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's you against you all the time. <laughs> and, and, you know, putting in the, that, that's why we trainers often say that the most important workouts that you, you can put in the gym is the ones when you don't feel like doing it, because mm -hmm. that, that is the, even if it's not your best workout ever, it's just the fact that you, Hold the line. you, <laughs> You, you put in the effort, you know, and even if it didn't do anything biologically, which I could argue that it did, even if it didn't do anything positive for you biologically, it did something positive for you here that, that said, hey, you, like, even when you don't feel like it, look what you can do, which is, which is cool. Um, it's a nice, nice victory for yourself. So Katie asked in the, the group, how, what, well, let, let me, let me know if I rephrase your question poorly, or if I regurgitate your question poorly, that's a terrible word for that. Blah, here's your question. Um, but <laughs> so, uh, you asked some, sometimes I'm my own worst enemy on the inside. What are some ways that I can shift my mindset positively when that is the case? Is that about right? 
Okay. I've got, I've got the nods there. Um, so that, that's a, it's a tough question. I, you asked the question. I was like, man, you would ask that question. Let me, I need a whole PowerPoint for this thing, but it, a few things came to mind and I'd love to hear from the group. Um, if, if I miss anything, but a few things really stand out to me for first, as, as I was talking about earlier, one of the most powerful things for me is that I personally, I carry with me pictures of individuals. And I don't mean like actual photographs, but inside I, I carry pictures of individuals that I admire so that when I'm being my own worst enemy, I have my, my collection of people, my cloister of people to, to draw on, right? Like Jesus is a, is a big example in my world. Like when I suck, he's got it covered. And I, and I mean, he's not making the decisions for me. That, sometimes that would be very nice. But, but having, having that is, is deeply powerful. And the only way I know to do that is to spend time with those individuals regularly. So if they're individuals who don't live anymore, I'm, I'm reading their books. If I want to know how this person thinks, I want to know how this person acts. What would, <laughs> what would Lao Tzu say? What would Jesus say? What would, what would uh, Jordan Peterson say? He's a, he's a person that I, I draw on a lot. And, and podcasts are important for that too. Sometimes you actually get to hear the person say the things and it sticks there, you know, it sticks in your head and, and that's good. Uh, so I, I would say one of those things, and, and you have a discipline like this, and I think everybody here who's live has a discipline like this, engaging regularly with, with life-giving material um, is, is powerful and important. And the, the great men and women of the past who can really feed us, and even the great men and women of the present, we don't get to know everything about them. It's kind of like social media. You get the highlights. You know, they're they weren't always that articulate when they were writing, you know, like Jordan Peterson, I'm sure like half the time he's not that articulate, but in his book, he says some things that really resonate with me. It's really powerful. Right. So, uh, so knowing that you can take the highlights of humanity and, and incorporate them into yourself can help you when you're your own worst enemy. That's, that's one. Uh, the second thing that, that came to mind is something that Janet touched on earlier was, was building some structures under the positive mindset of your life for the times when you don't like, so you have some momentum. So you have some, something to, to prop you up, to bolster you when you are your own worst enemy. Like, I don't know, man, I know my kids are my greatest challenge, but at the same time, I get out of bed for them most of the time. Like, like quite, quite honestly, I would not get up at 5 AM every day if it wasn't for the fact that, well, if I don't, the whole house will be destroyed by the time I do get out of bed. Um, and so, and so, and, and, you know, I didn't structure my life so that I would get up at 5 a.m. because of my kids. But I'm, I'm saying that that forces like that in our lives are things that we can choose. We can choose a workout buddy. We can choose a class time. We can choose um, things about uh, how our day is structured, you know, keeping a slot in your day to go for a walk rather than having to work nonstop for six hours could be a, you know, why, why did you go for a walk? Well, it's what I do every day at 12, right? Like it's just there. That's what I do. Um, and the same thing goes for, for me working with my clients. I have them on very specific days, right? Because I can be in a coaching mindset and I can enjoy uh, time spent well with them rather than letting that schedule run me. And I'm not saying I do that perfectly, but it's structuring my day such that there's a support structure for when I am not, I am not the best person for me right now. Maybe some other people need to need to be a part of that. Now I will say some people are introverted. <laughs> sorry. Sorry no. if that's you. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, I'm I'm an extreme extrovert. So people are helpful to me in that respect. I think the, the introverts flip flip side of that is is to to have the solitude required to recharge, right? Um, but anyway, some structures and supports in your day are, are powerful. And then um, the last thing that came to mind, um, and this is something I personally wrestle with right now in my life, is, is developing relationships and knowing when I can be vulnerable or not. Um, when I'm not the best version of me, it, it doesn't have to be like, you know, there's a difference between calling your friend up and dumping your crap on them and calling them up and saying, hey, you know what, I'm dealing with this thing. 
and here are the two paths I see in front of me and I just needed to say it out loud so I know which one's better. Um, having something like that's powerful. That's that's actually one of the things that I'm, I'm working to build into the Better Daily group is the, is the sense that it, even if you suck today, we collectively as a community don't have to. And therefore maybe you can Maybe you can ride the coattails of, of somebody who doesn't suck today, and that would be good. <laughs> so you don't you don't you don't have to be in that headspace all by yourself. Um, so anyway, th those were some things that came to mind, and I hope uh, hope that's helpful. Uh, do, does that bring up any follow up questions for you, or or do you feel that gives you some things to work with? I don't think I have any follow up questions. I just I guess what I was it it pretty much answered it. I, it's just those times, you know, I find myself making sure that I circle back to better daily and read other people's mindsets, like at least once a day so that I can get my mind right again, because um, the job that I do pretty much, it's very difficult some days to keep my own mindset so I have mm. to reset several times a day. And I just, uh, I don't, I just need to give myself a break, I guess. Mm. Well, and you said two things there, like you, you're kind of removing your psyche from the workspace where things are, are hard. Um, and then the second thing is inserting it into a, a place where things aren't so hard for a little bit and it might be positive. I, I just had a conversation with a client this morning about uh, she's kind of the leader of her family from a health and fitness perspective. You know, she's got to like wrestle her husband to make sure he takes his medications and his supplements and eats the right stuff. And he's like, you know, sneaking gas station snacks on the way home because he knows his wife doesn't want him to want him to eat them. But he is like, well, She's like, I don't want you to die of a heart attack. He's like, but I would really like my hostess. Um, and so that's kind of their, their wrestling right now. Uh, but, but that being said, one of the things that was important for her as we were discussing things is like, man, you know, all this COVID stuff happened. The gym kind of closed down. She's been able to maintain her own fitness regimen at home and stuff. I'm like, man, it's, it's time for you to get back into a class of some sort around your fitness people. You know, because right now it's, it's just her on an island, <laughs> you know, and and I'm not saying that that's what everybody needs to do is go join a CrossFit gym once a week. And if you know me, I know that you, you'll know, I don't recommend CrossFit often, but she needed to go be with her CrossFit people at least once a week. That, that said the, uh, nothing against CrossFit, by the way, it's just for most people, it can be very injurious if they overdo it. <clears throat> that, 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 that said for her specifically that she needed to be in a space where she was like, oh, I'm not the only person in the world that everybody leans on because <laughs> because that's hard. It's hard to be the person that everybody comes to for your, you know, for their problems. And you're like, really? OK, like, yeah, bring it on. I don't know what I did to get in this position. I got stamped on my forehead, like bring all your woes and worries, you know, <laughs> um, and, and maybe the, the people that that you depend on don't have to have to be people that you dump on because you know how that that feels. but but you can see that they are in their little space trudging forward 1% better every single day. And so you like, that gives you the courage and the, the wherewithal to continue doing the same. Um, or at least that's what I thought I heard. I'm just going to say that that's what I heard. <laughs> D does that resonate with, with anybody having a, having a space where you know that you're not the only one trying to get better? Big time. I see how fast a negative phone call, you know, because I'm on Zoom all day long. And mm. I know that, you know, when when you get on the phone with somebody who's really struggling, which, you know, there's time for that. You just, you know, you're there for them, but you, right. you can see how fast it can pull you into that, that space um, if mm. you're not careful. And, you know, it's important to be there for each other, but it really can, if you're not careful, let it pull, pull you right into the same mindset. Mm. Right. Yeah, there's a there's a time for compassion and time for pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. Yeah. Uh, Katie, thank you for that question. That's I don't feel like I've done it all the justice I need to, so I'm going to continue pondering it. But 
Does anybody have anything to add to Katie's question? I'm, I'm not the only person here who wrestles with this sort of thing. So I, I know there's some collective wisdom in the group. Anything I missed, anything that you guys do to, to wrestle with mindsets when you, you're kind of your own worst enemy? I had to be very intentional on what I was telling myself because it became very apparent that I was telling myself really toxic, negative things all day long, you know, and I really had to stop and just realize that it was a habit I'd gotten into and really, you know, stop and, and not do that. And that, the one thing I tell my friends when they're doing it is I was like, God's mad that you're beating up on his kid. <laughs> so it's That's right. so yeah. having that attitude. <laughs> That's funny. I like that. I, I told I told my wife one time. I was like, "Don't say crap like that about my wife." Like she was yes. saying, you know, so, so I was like, "Nobody, nobody yeah. talks about my wife that way." Like, yeah. <laughs> not not even you. So I do that to my friends. I'll be like, "Stop beating up on my friend." <laughs> That's cool. That's kind of cool. I like that. Um, for for me, becoming aware of of negativity means I have to write it down. Like I won't I won't be aware in my own head. Like, oh, that was just like, come on, man. Um, I, I'm not very, maybe I'm too ADHD for that <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> but writing it down, I see it on paper. I'm like, oh, man, is that really what's in there? Nah, I can do better than that. Now, do you journal regularly, Alex? I do. I, I do journal regularly. I have four documents on my computer. One's called Self. One's titled Kristen, my wife. And the other two are my boys, Gabriel and Bennett. And so um, I, I journal to each of them regularly. But when I'm kind of open journaling or, or, you know, reading the the Bible or reading a book that, that generates thoughts or prayers or whatever, I, I usually write those in there. So uh, it's, it's a very long document. And <laughs> I don't expect it to ever make sense to anybody else, but it's, it's, it makes sense to me. Ooh. Yeah, my family's been instructed to burn all of mine when I die. <laughs> <laughs> Spread them on a mountain, right over the river. <laughs> Love it. Awesome. Anybody else journal? Robin, do you journal? Janet, Katie, do you guys journal no, at all? No. That's on my list of things that I should be doing. <laughs> it's it's a i would say it's a a cert, it's an acquired taste it's like oysters like either it's yeah. for you or it's not and if it is for you you have to kind of develop a taste for it nobody's like the first time they try an oyster like wow that's really good let's do that again um kind of journaling is kind of like that well <laughs> janet's like now i don't want to journal thanks <laughs> uh, i no i actually i mean i know it can be very powerful i just you know, it's um, it's a matter of getting it to the top of the priorities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, if you're waking up reading your Bible every morning, you're, you're you've got some good priorities straight. I don't know if I'd <laughs> change much about it. Yeah. <clears throat> so I, I promised I promised to uh, to talk a bit about the science and why the the mindset thing has anything to do with this bigger picture of health and fitness and so uh, we, we talked a little bit about the the growth mindset versus the fixed mindset studies we, we even talked a, a little bit about uh, some mindset strategies you know being in a good good headspace but coming back to this original diagram of the difference between kind of the old way of thinking about health and fitness which is that calories in calories out and then to to the the newer slightly more complicated, but, but still powerful way of, of looking at health and fitness, which is how our nutrition and our exercise and different stressors interact with our DNA to either break us down or build us up, right? And what you'll notice there is that all of your stressors at the top, and you know, obviously that's a simplified list. These are the major stressors in people's lives, which is relationships, work, uh, money, wow. and, and, and exercise. And you could probably put a few other things up there. Um, and those, those things feed into, you know, the, the stress bucket. They're, they're the things that our DNA has to adapt to. Right. And 
stress itself is, it sounds like an amorphous concept at a cellular level. It's very specific. There are very specific things that happen in the cell that, that stress it out and signal, hey, something needs to change about the machinery here. We need to turn this gene on. We need to turn this gene off. We need to do this differently next time you know, we make a new cell. That actually happens at the level of every cell, but it's filtered through a very interesting process. And we're, we're just starting to learn how this process works and affects us physiologically. And that is our belief system. That's our, that's the set of things that we believe about what's happening right now. And, you know, I've, we've talked about the Bible here. We've talked about religious writers and, and whatnot, but this doesn't necessarily just mean religious belief. This is literally the, the lens through which you see the world. That's your, your belief system. So what you believe about what's happening in front of you can actually affect the way your body responds to it at a physiological level. This is, this is probably a tired metaphor or maybe an analogy. Analogy is the right word here. It, it's probably a tired analogy because I keep using it, but it, it's, it's exactly the, the thing that I hope to get across here. If you're running from a mountain lion, that's not exercise. <laughs> that's as stressful and, and rough as it gets, right? Have you guys seen that? that video floating around on, on social media of that guy like backpedaling from a mountain lion for like five minutes, like you're terrified for him. He's like, go away, go away. Ah, he's trying to, trying to intimidate the thing. And he, he ran up on some cubs and that, that thing's not leaving alone. He doesn't die. There's no gore. Like it's worth, worth a watch if you haven't seen it. Anyway, um, running from a mountain lion is not exercise. There's nothing constructive about that at the cellular level. You will be spent afterward. I haven't done it. I don't plan on doing it, but take my word for it. Um, it's not exercise. You will be spent afterward, but running on a treadmill or going for your jog or going for your, your walk without the stressor of the animal trying to eat you, um, that is exercise. And that can be positive and constructive. And what you believe that the motion's the same, but what you believe about what you're actually doing changes how it affects you at a cellular level. And, and we're just starting to study this stuff. Uh, last time in the Faithful 40, I highlighted a, a study that I'll, I'll, just, I'll just summarize here uh, in case you have questions about it. We can, we can talk about that in a bit. But um, in this study, what they, what they basically did is they, they tested genetics to see if people were genetically good at endurance or genetically bad at endurance. But they didn't tell the students what they were actually good or bad at. They randomized them and then, you know, told them randomly, you're good at endurance. You have the genes for it. And they told the students, you're bad at endurance. And what was crazy is that before they were told, they performed a certain way on this endurance test. And then after being told you're good at endurance or bad at endurance, you, you performed what you were told, not what your genes actually were. So the folks who had the good endurance genes, but were told that they, they had bad endurance genes, yeah. they performed worse Same on me. the test, which is, which is crazy because, and, and they actually did some physiological measures and whatnot too. Their carbon dioxide buffering was lower. They, they stopped sooner on the test. Like, and, man. and so oh. I, I think I've got, I'm going to mute you brother. Um, so your, your mindset and your belief system not only changes the way that you approach a problem, but it literally changes you at a physiological level. And we're starting to learn more and more what this actually looks like in, in our, our purview. So, so why, why talk about mindset in the Faithful 40? It's because if you approach your day with a growth mindset, and, and we talked about all the mechanisms there, right? Having to share that with a group, putting your best foot forward, um, hearing something on the way to work, giving yourself some time to wake up, getting into the Bible, uh, reading, reading other works that you find impactful or meaningful and saying, this is the thing that I'm, I'm going to focus on today. That can actually change, not the stressors of your day, but it can change how you approach them. And it can change how you approach them in such a way that it actually physically changes you on the inside. Like it changes the way that, that your body rebuilds itself. Um, and so what you see in front of you is, is actually the pictures of stress, where stress actually comes from. On the left, it's the biological picture of stress. This is at the level of the cell. You have billions of these all over you and in you. 
This is what makes you up. This is the small living components of your, your body. And there are, there are three major types of, of stressors. There's the heat shock response. There's the hypoxic stress, osmotic stress, uh, UPR, that's, that's mitochondrial antioxidant, or excuse me, uh, oxidants building up. There's UPR in the endoplasmic reticulum. And then there's the oxidative stress response in, in general at the level of the nucleus. These are what stressors look like to your cell. They're not like, oh, I got a bad email. Your cells don't get to think about that. Or, or ah, I'm running from a mountain lion. But stressors at the level of the cell are they don't have any they don't have any emotional significance they don't have a top-down mindset but on the right there you see the psychological and neurological definition of stress and this is at the level of the brain and our brain can signal the body from a top-down perspective it can signal the body to send messages to the cells about whether or not this is a growth stress or whether or not this is a destructive stress and in our mindset, our belief system is what regulates that process. So if I approach my workout and I say, I don't feel like working out today, but I'm going to give it my best effort. And I might not be able to lift as heavy a weights because my back doesn't feel great, or I'm a little tired, so I'm not going to be able to run as hard. But this, it's important that I do this today. That sends a different signal to my cells than like, oh, I don't want to work out. This is stupid. Oh man. Like I, I did 400 pounds last time on the leg press and my knee hurts at 200 pounds now. Like this is terrible. Like I just, I'm not going to be able to do this and forget the run at the end. I'm not, I'm not, not even, I'm not even in it. Right. Those, those two. And we haven't, we haven't measured this. We haven't been able to measure this um, it, from a scientific perspective, because how do you do that? How do you take a group of people and say, guess what? You're, you're a bag of crap today and you hate working out. Now go work out and see what happens. <laughs> and you take another group and you say, you're the best thing since sliced bread. Your hard work is really gonna be rewarded today. It has everything to do with you being a good dad and a good husband and a great business owner. Go, go make it happen, right? Let's see what happens with your body with that in your head. Like we don't do that to people. That's probably on the level of, of like unethical research studies to, to like <laughs> verbally abuse somebody before their workout to get them in the, in the fixed mindset. Um, setting. So I don't know, maybe some brilliant scientist will, will be able to parse these things out. But what we do know is that folks who report a growth mindset have more muscle mass, have less cognitive decline later in age, and have less heart problems. And so we assume that whatever's happening in the, the mindset space is affecting them at a, a biological level. And we're starting to be able to parse out these, these different steps here. So I've said a lot of things, but, uh, oh, and this is the copy of the abstract from that research study about the endurance genes. What, what questions, comments, or thoughts have I brought up for you in, in addressing the mindset and belief system space at a biological level, how that affects your nutrition and your exercise? Well, it seems like that the... I'm going to go ahead and do this, even though I don't feel like it, that, that kind of talk, that positive reinforcement to your own self um, needs to just be generally a part of your workout. Like it almost needs to be written down as part of your workout because mm, that would yeah. make all the difference in the world. That, that's exactly right. That one of those questions, what am I fighting for? Like, I, without that question, I don't know that I would be able to stand in front of you guys today because most of the time when I've wrestled with injury cycles and Ehlers-Danlos, most of the time, I don't feel like working out. There's a lot of reasons not to, right? I don't feel like doing it, but, but uh, I'm so glad I have, but in those, that space for me anyway, on the, on the little note card, what am I fighting for? I can, I can list that stuff out. You know, and it's like, well, I don't care if I feel like it or not today. That's that's what's on the table. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pick the weight up today. Dang it! <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna pick the weight up. I'm gonna go for the run. I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna do whatever. Um, obviously, there's there's a line in there where you, if you're not mindful of the way your workouts are affecting your body, you can run yourself into the ground. But you're exactly right, Katie. The the 
piece of knowing why you do what you do and what's what's worth fighting for in those moments if you don't have that then i mean why why would you why would you do the hard thing if you don't have a good reason all said anybody else did this bring up comments or thoughts for you in with regard to your your mindset practice and exercise you you're about to go through this janet like you're about to have a surgery and feel like a caged bird which oh, yeah. just which just does hell to a person's mind who appreciates exercise <laughs> well, I, I have a group of people ready to do a lot of walks because they realize that they're going to be um taking me off the ceiling so i love it um, yeah so they're they're going to be doing lots of walks and i've got a list of some things that have long since needed to be tackled that i'm going to try to get done while I'm uh, not, not able to be at the gym so that I can feel good about my time. So, mm. yes. I love it. Yep. And now so. you, pro you, you probably already know this, but let me as a coach encourage you. One of the wonderful things about exercise is that all of your adaptations that you have right now, your muscle mass, your fat mass, all those things, they're, they're genetically adapted so that Let's say you have to take off a few weeks or, yes. or even a couple months before you're mm -hmm. able to pick up a meaningful amount of weight or go for a hard run or whatever. What's really cool is you're going to bounce back really fast. Like those things will come back quickly yeah. for you. So hang in there. You didn't lose all your muscle or gain a bunch of fat. Like you're, you're going to be you. just fine. Yes, you thank it. you. And I'm, I'm excited. I figured, you know, you can always do body weight squats and things like that, you know, so <laughs> um, figure there's there's still lots of stuff that you can do that you know maybe you can hit some areas of your body that you normally don't give attention to so I'll be I love that. creative <laughs> I, I sprained my wrist really bad one time and uh, mm -hmm. like you don't you don't realize how much you use your hand and your wrist until you can't and you're like mm -hmm. oh and one of my buddies was like are you going to the gym? This was back in college. Yeah. He's like, you going to the gym? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to the gym. He's like, what are you going to do? I was like, I'm going to have the best legs and abs ever. Yes. I, like, I, guess, I can't, can't do anything with my arms. So. <laughs> well, we do have some pools at the gym. So as soon as I'm cleared, I'm going to try to, you know, just put a paddleboard under my chest and, you know, because mm. I have my uh, flippers and want me to work on my kick for scuba diving. Uh, there you go. I'm hoping to go back down with my kid this summer. So I figure I'll we'll work on that. I appreciate you being open about this. This is actually one of the pieces of growth mindset, right? Imagine, imagine all the directions you could grow as like a circle or a sphere. There, every once in a while, you'll come up against obstacles and it's like, I can't grow anymore in that direction. But that mm -hmm. doesn't mean I can't, I can't grow somewhere else. Well, see, this uh, is where ADD comes in great. <laughs> you just bounce off in the next direction. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't, I can't use my shoulder. I'm going to learn how to cook with my left hand. Ha -ha. Like, <laughs> so, it. yeah, I just, I'm like, you just got to roll with life, you know, it's, mm. is what it is. And, you know, you find different ways to do things and you figure you probably gain different strengths and different abilities. And, you know, it's a time that maybe I get to spend with some friends that I wouldn't or, with my daughter or do some mm. things that you know maybe I wouldn't take time to do with my normal schedule so try to bring mm. something positive out of it good job good job Re reach out if three weeks from now you're in a much worse place yes. <laughs> we well, we'll, I, I won't be on camera if I uh, haven't been able to use my right hand to do my hair but <laughs> <laughs> just wear a hat just like, come with a nice ball cap yeah <clears throat> Um, now, now, Pat and Lisa, this is probably the second time you've heard me talk about this specifically. Are you taking anything else away from this or, or after it's simmered for a month or two? Has it has it brought up any new questions or thoughts for you? Um, sorry, we, we lost Pat for a few minutes. Um, That's all right. You're holding <laughs> down the fort, Lisa. Um, I, I would just say for me... Um, a lot of times it's, it's more like, um, just having to push myself, you know, like if my mindset is like, Oh, I don't feel good or I'm having pains or whatever. Um, I find that when I just push myself and say, I'm going to do this, then I push through it and I, I, I feel better. So, um, mm. 
and I've noticed that more like the more I'm doing this I mean because remember back in the beginning I had my you know my back I like pulled my back out and mm. um but just kind of you know the mindset of you know I can do this I have goals I you know I have things I, I want to see changes in so just to keep plugging away and um so I think that really kind of helps me mm if that makes sense yeah. sorry yeah the the cool thing about consistency is that you build up some momentum so mm -hmm. like even even when you don't feel like doing things if, if you've been doing something positive for a little bit that that momentum kind of pushes you you know you have the last yeah. seven days where things were were going well and you have the next three to five days that hopefully things continue to go well and and kind of pushes you out of the the rut you know yes yes uh, yeah. definitely Cool. Yeah. I, I find in coaching, it's, it's interesting. It's common that somebody will miss a day of a workout and then they might make it up somewhere else, or they might have to, you know, pepper it in elsewhere. But if they miss two days of a workout, then it like, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to call you. I've got to text you. I've got to bother <laughs> you because, because two days is enough. Maybe three is enough to lose momentum. It's not enough to like negate all your results or anything, but but it's mm -hmm. enough to lose momentum and to get out of the, to get out of the groove, to get off the train, so to speak, or people say fall off the wagon. It's more like, yeah, it's more, it's more like the, the wagon, I don't know, the wagon flips over. And if you just sit there long enough, you get stuck, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's stuck in the mud. Yeah. It's your, it's your wagon. It's not going anywhere without you, but you know, it gets stuck. If you don't do something about it, it gets frozen in mm -hmm. there or mud it up that's where so, having workout buddies is huge yes you know, having somebody drag your butt out there is huge right yeah those those early morning partners i don't i don't like working out in the morning personally i like a mid-morning you know i don't always get to choose but i like no, a really. mid-morning like like i get breakfast in my system it, it does what it needs to i get some work done and then i get to take a break and you know invest in me that's where i where I thrive 9 a.m is my time man mm -hmm. um but but that early morning I'll work out if I have a friend who I know is getting up too yeah. <laughs> I'll get up and I'll go and I'll be like man I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you but here I am um, well you left 6 30 the other morning to run it was 17 degrees out <laughs> woof <laughs> <laughs> I love it that, that's you're in Colorado aren't you uh, my son was in Colorado. I'm in Philadelphia. Oh, okay. I was like, what? okay, my bad. Uh, yeah. Philadelphia. Well, I, I mean, I guess you guys probably even get colder than Colorado regularly. It, it just so. depends. But yeah, it was 17 degrees and yeah. <laughs> well, so the, the last thing I wanted to touch on with you guys this evening is the idea of a second brain. So we've been talking about making decisions, right? And one of the, one of the strange things about uh, consciousness and subconsciousness it's it's actually estimated that our our conscious processes make up about one percent of our brain like the part that we have control over and and that's a that's a super rough estimate we don't know how to quantify consciousness in the least but but in the idea of quantifying all the things that your brain's controlling that you don't have a decision to make about like right now your heart's beating did you decide no it's it just does that right and that's controlled by your brain stem um, right now you are a certain temperature. You didn't decide to be 98.6 degrees right now, or if you run a little hot 99, um, you didn't decide that your, your brain is regulating that there's a certain amount of, of bile coming out of your, your pancreas right now and being stored in your, your gallbladder. You don't decide that that happens, you know, and, and all of those signals are happening right now. At, at a subconscious level, you don't get to make those decisions. So neuroscientists have estimated about 99% of our brain is completely outside of, of our purview. Mm -hmm. Like we don't get to make decisions about that. But the 1% of us that does get to make decisions is, is powerful enough to affect all of the other systems just in small spurts, <laughs> uh, which is pretty wild. And that's what we've been talking about here is, is the idea of mindset. Where is that 1% of your brain? And what is it telling you about what's in front of you and what you're gonna do about it? 
um, that's that's pretty powerful, and and that's something you can train, and it's influ it's influenceable. Is that right? In no, impressionable. That's the word. <laughs> Im impressionable. I'm all proud of myself. Uh, the that part of our brain is impressionable. We can, we can be influenced by a podcast. We can be influenced by a Bible verse. We can be influenced by a conversation like this that, that can give us some other tools or a different language to tell ourselves more powerful things or, or better things, right? Um, the other thing, though, that we're learning about the way mindset works and the limitations thereof is that other 99% of, of the decision-making process of, of our bodies is not only stored in the brain, it's also at the level of our digestive tract, specifically our, our large and small intestine. Um, so I'll, I'll give you, for instance, your, your digestive tract actually communicates with your most primitive systems. So some people are calling it our second brain. Um, how does this work? For instance, circadian rhythm, whether or not you're a morning person or a night person or, or how sleepy you get at certain times or whether or not you wake up, Th those things can be influenced by your microbiome, your digestive tract, speaking to your pineal gland in the, the middle of your brain. And so what we don't know how to influence that yet, but what we do know is that morning people have a different bacterial fingerprint in their large intestine than people who report being night owls. And the same thing goes for people who report being um, insomniacs or having sleep, sleep disturbances versus those who report sleeping very well. There, there is a there's a certain microbiome profile for, for people who are having sleep disturbances and, and generally stay up really late versus people who are waking up early or, or sleeping solid through the, the night. And we don't know if you can just take the good, the good bacteria, the good sleeping bacteria and put it in somebody who's not sleeping good and then they sleep good. We don't know that. What we do know is in similar circumstances where you take, uh, rats that have been made obese by feeding them way too much plus some msg and rats who are fit and lean if we transplant those bacterial um, colonies from those rats the fat rats get thinner and the thin rats get fatter even though they eat the same which is pretty crazy so we're, we're starting to learn that our, our microbiome our gut actually has a role to play in in the processes upstream and i'm, I'm getting to a point here so hang with me um, but this also affects status regulation. So your, your gut actually produces about 70% of the serotonin in your system right now. Serotonin is, is how we currently treat depression. So if you've gone through a particularly low time or you had a period of high stress and then you dipped down and, and you went to a, a doctor for help, hey man, I'm, I'm, I'm not in a good place right now. I need something to get me through this time. I need to be propped up and bolstered. They would give you something that affects the serotonin uptake in, in your brain. Um, and, and that said, that, that's 70% regulated by your digestive tract. Um, and then hunger and fullness. Your digestive tract tells you when you're hungry and tells you when you're full, which is very strange, right? Because, um, and, and it's, not, it's not just like, oh, my stomach's full. There's a signal that goes from your stomach to your brain that says, hey, we're full. It happens when the stomach lining stretches a bit. It sends a signal to the brain. And then there are receptors in the brain that respond to that. There are some folks whose receptors, for whatever reason, there's a few different reasons that we're, we're learning, they're not, they don't register full. And so the stomach can just keep stretching, theoretically, until you explode it or you, you start pressing on your pancreas or your kidney and you're like, ow, oh, this kind of hurts, I should stop eating or whatever. Um, that uh, your, your digestive tract, your second brain can tell you <clears throat> when you're hungry or full. It also sends signals to your immune system. So the, the immune response actually begins at the level of the gut. Um, at, there's, you know, there's actual research right now about the, the second COVID vaccine. Isn't it kind of weird that a respiratory virus, the vaccine from a respiratory virus can give you digestive issues like diarrhea and stuff. That's a common, commonly reported side effect is, you know, stomach cramps and digestive issues. What the heck does a respiratory virus have to do with your digestive tract? Well, just like every other time that you've wrestled with um, a parasite or a virus or a bacteria, your digestive tract is actually the, the site at which your, your body signals an immune response. Your, your body uh, lets out inflammatory cytokines that, that tells the, the white blood cells that, and, and the, the osteocytes, the cells in your bones that actually release 
these uh, these blood cells and then your lymphocytes that actually release these blood cells as well. It tells them, hey, we're under attack. We need we need some help here. Like bring the inflammation, bring the army, you know, like something's happening at the level of that digestive tract. And so that's that's a signal in your body that there's a high stress thing happening. And that comes from the gut as well. And then relaxation as well. Relaxation can be signaled uh, from the gut. There are several neurotransmitters that will that will tell the body, hey, relax, like everything's good down here. Or hey, don't relax, everything's not good down here. Um, and, and we're learning a bunch of other things. So the, the reason I say this is because mindset is powerful and important. Like having a growth mindset is powerful and important. And at some level, our food impacts our mood. Ah, I worked on that for a while. You should be very proud of me. <laughs> but at, at some level, our, our food can impact our mood because what we eat can affect what happens at the level of our digestive tract and can affect uh, then upstream our brain. And so I say this because some of the things that we work to overcome in our day can be mindset related. But if we are, are, are knocking, knocking ourselves out at the knees by consuming things that mess with our mindset, then no amount of mindset work is going to fix that. Or it's something, a battle that you're going to have to fight regularly. So I've said a lot of things here. I can use a concrete example in a second, but I want to know if I've brought up any questions or concerns from your perspective in the idea that food affects your mood because of what we're learning about our second brain at the level of the gut. Is this like earth shattering to anybody or is this old news to you? Like I've heard this before. Okay, thanks for reiterating it. This is something I live by, so I'm, I'm that, really... That's fascinating to me. What do you mean by something you live by? Like, you know that you cognitively operate differently when you eat strangely, or you you follow a, a set of rules because just, of this? Just everything with the gut, I just realized the critical nature of it. I mean, you know, it, like, I had double ear infection while I was diving and they had to throw me on an antibiotic. Um, so oh, I man. On a plane. Well, first thing I did was grab probiotics and just started like, you know, because I knew it was going to destroy my good bacteria. And that's mm. everything that has to do with my mood. It has to do with my digestive, with my, you know, with my immune system, with everything. So I've, mm. I've been a huge proponent of keeping my gut healthy and you know, not, that's why I do organics. That's why I <laughs> try to have things that don't have the weed killer on it and everything else. Mm. And I try to watch my grains and sugars and everything else is to keep my gut healthy because it just mm. affects every single part of my body. And huge, huge effect. Well said. And, and obviously you've noticed a difference, otherwise you wouldn't keep doing it. Oh yeah. No, it's, it's, it's major. And I, I mean, if I get a little sugar in my diet, it, just really throws me off. Mm. I can notice it quickly. <laughs> mm. Yeah, uh, I get picked on a lot in my family circles because I eat weird. But I've got some, I've got kefir and I've got aloe juice and I've got my ginger tea and like I've got my oatmeal with my cinnamon and I got ev everything has its important place, you know. Um, and I'm like, look, if I eat outside of this, my digestive system tells me. <laughs> so, like, if I, I get a little crazy it's like hey you get back in line and and I also notice that it affects me um from a cognitive perspective I feel a little cloudy my my mood's not as good and yeah. I'm not saying my mood's great all the time but you know my, I'm less energetic it's like I'm living under a cloud kind of thing yeah no, it really messes me up if, if my gut's out of line so I'm, I'm pretty sensitive to it mm. Anyone else? Is this like earth shattering to you or is this something you've heard before or th something that you, you're you currently working with? You know, no. I, I wouldn't say earth shattering, but it's almost like it kind of makes, it's almost like it should be common sense, but I don't know why I've not thought of it like that before. It, it's kind of like, it sounds like, yeah, that that's right. But I don't think I've consciously thought that through before. Mm. yeah that it, it hit me really hard when I thought it through <laughs> I was like oh 
wow, that's a whole piece of my life that could improve that I'm not paying attention to. Yeah, it, for sure. It's like, I should know this. You know, what? <laughs> I, I joked with this. I joked with you about this, actually. I, I believe in the future, at some point, we will have smart toilets that tell us how our gut's doing every time we go to the bathroom. I, I actually looked it up because I was like, that's genius. Like, I should, I should patent that. And somebody already has, by the way, 2018. <laughs> like, it's coming. <laughs> it might be very expensive at first, <laughs> like the first TVs. But anyway, that, that said, w- we don't know enough yet to be able to tell you everything about how things in your gut are affecting you, but we know enough to be able to track it, which is very strange to to say, hey, it used to be like this and you felt this way and your cholesterol were these numbers and now it's like this and you feel much better and your cholesterol is better and you're eating these things. So probably don't stop doing that. Um, (laughs) So we're, we're starting to learn those things right now. If you're interested in this sort of thing, there's a huge research study going on that's international called the Great American Gut Project. It's not just American, um, but <laughs> I'd hate to be these people from a job perspective. Can you imagine this job? They're getting fecal samples from all over the world with very, very long like questionnaires associated. And they're like, hmm, what is, what is this bacteria doing with this person? And so they're just kind of logging it. We're, we're not expecting anything specific. We're just logging it. And, uh, but that's got to be quite the job, right? I just imagine surrounded by there's poop from Canada and there's poop from Africa and there's poop and there, there's Chicago poop. Like, don't, I'm just kidding. I don't have anything against Chicago, but that's what came to mind. So that's going on right now. I'll let you know if we learn anything interesting. Anybody else? Um, I, I would just say that I like, since I've been eating so much better and just really cut out sugar, um, when I do have like even a bite or two of dessert or something with sugar, I immediately get a headache and, um, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I mean, it's kind of like, like I, I know, but you know, sometimes the temptation is stronger than, Mm. you know, like, Oh, well maybe I'll be fine this time, but maybe I'll um, be fine this time. (laughs) Yes, yes. <laughs> but I, yeah, so I had Sunday night, I had, um, I mean, just a little tiny taste of this brownie and um, a little tiny taste of some cobbler. I mean, it wasn't even that much. And um, yeah, I got a headache right away. And then Monday morning, I literally felt like I'd been hit by a truck. I mean, I could barely oh. get out of bed. that's rough yeah that could have been that hike we went on was pretty rough so maybe I was just worn out but um yeah it was it was terrible so Mm. I I definitely notice it I know I know certain things I eat how it's going to make me feel um so I just Mm. try to avoid them as much as I can and um definitely when I'm eating clean and healthy and you know, making sure I'm taking in a lot of vegetables and, um, you know, lean proteins. I, I really feel much better. So. Mm. It, yeah. It's funny you, you say that because when, when mm. sugar is a really good example of this, it's, it's one of the few that mm-hmm. I know it's just, a, it's real simple to see an immediate change. Um, so let's say somebody has been eating, you know, the standard American diet goes mm. lower, lower sugar for four days. They, they notice physically that they feel terrible mm-hmm. during those four days. Yeah. And then afterward, they notice they feel a lot better. And when they do eat sugar, they notice a difference in, in how they feel. And it's, it's pretty amazing that it happens that fast. But mm-hmm. they've, they've replicated this in uh, studies with uh, vegans, where they'll, they'll take somebody who eats a vegan-based diet and then somebody who eats an, a non-vegan diet. And, and they, you know, they swap them like the the vegans go non-vegan, the non-vegans go vegan. And they, they take stool samples from, from these individuals within 48 hours, their microbiome shifts completely hmm. to, to deal with the new way of eating. And I'm not saying that they're happy about it. I'm not saying, you know, some people who haven't been eating vegan go vegan all of a sudden, like they're going to be gassy and bloated, regardless of what yeah. bacteria is going on in their system. They're like 40 grams of fiber. 
good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, your, your body's like, stop it. <laughs> like, no, no more green leafy vegetables. Um, but <laughs> chew your food. So sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop with the bad jokes. But but anyway, that that being said, it, it adapts fast. Like it's a very, mm. very fast mechanism. Um, and the fact that that we have bacteria in our gut that can actually send inflammatory cytokines out, like the headache that you talked about, mm-hmm. like in, inflammatory cytokines can do that. It's almost like having an allergic reaction. Not it's not the same thing, but it's very similar, right? So um the the fact that our our body is amazing enough to shift that fast to shift the environment that fast but also that it can affect us in a way that we can we can feel and notice if, if mm-hmm. we're cognizant of it um it's it's powerful so yeah i'm i'm, I'm sorry i've ruined sorry i've ruined sugar for you but you're welcome <laughs> um, <laughs> no i mean it this is something i mean gosh i've i've always like for years you know I'll stop eating sugar and then Mm. you know it's I just I know it's not good for me and I know it you know there's really nothing good about it but um so (laughs) except for it tastes good (laughs) other than that I mean goodness (laughs) and it's very tempting (laughs) So, so I, I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time on this here, but, but if, if sweets have been ruined for you from this perspective, you can, you can actually do some things like, uh, like honey, for instance, if you have some local honey, mm-hmm. uh, that actually affects your microbiome very differently than, than just straight table sugar, even okay. though on the, on the label, it's still sugar. It's oligosaccharides, like the, the, the stuff that comes out of a bee is a much longer chain carbohydrate that affects your mm-hmm. microbiome differently and, and might not hit your system so hard. So yeah. um, I'm not saying, you know, go carte blanche with the cupcakes as long as they're, they're you know, sweetened with honey. But what, what, I'm, <laughs> what I am saying is make, making conscious shifts when you're like, hey, you know, I am feeling a little something sweet. You know, for me, I'm, that's Greek yogurt with, uh, with some local honey on it and some goji berry powder. And mm-hmm. that makes me really happy. And, and I'm generally pretty sensitive to sugar, but that doesn't bother me very much. Um, it doesn't bother me at all. Actually, I'm very happy with it. And then I get my yeah. sweet and that's, that's, that's good. So, um, mm-hmm. I, uh, try some honey, see how you like it. Yeah. Oh, I do like honey. And we, we do that. We put it in yogurt and, um, mm. and we have some, uh, dark chocolate that we like kind of grind Perfect. up with my cheese grinder and yeah. put it in there. It's, it's actually go. really good and then sometimes add fruit shaders. or whatever uh-huh yep sometimes You're so add gourmet some... I love it <laughs> <laughs> well Pat started doing that because I have a little like it you know it's like the cheese grater that they use in like the Italian restaurants with the little thing yeah. that you know so he he put it in there and now we just keep it in the pantry <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> we ever need it just blow it out and <laughs> go, go to the leaves yeah. they don't have it's like do you want some parmesan with that it's like do you, would you like some dark chocolate shavings with that that's awesome <laughs> yes. that's so cool yeah <laughs> coming over for dinner i want some dark <laughs> chocolate shavings on stuff yeah. <laughs> oh when i go to the store my 17 year old uh can you get me some uh crab dip and some lobster cakes i'm like oh my gosh that one's eating me out of house and home. <laughs> oh, 17 year old, they're, they're not, they're not cheap to feed, man. He wants lobster. It's like, sure. You can oh, mow yeah. some lawns and <laughs> buy lobster dip. Oh, exactly. my poor boys. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> you can, crazy. you can have, you can have potatoes and, and sardines unless you mm. want to go buy it. All right. Yeah. Um, that, enough about Alex's poor dejected children and their teens. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when we get there uh does anybody have anything on their minds that we didn't get to cover tonight as far as mindsets concerned we have we have run the gambit we have talked through fixed versus growth mindsets we've talked about uh different strategies kind of mining from the group of what to do when you're your own worst enemy and building support systems around that and and being engaged in communities and and taking a, a break away from the places that that create those negative mind spaces. We've talked about the science of the 1% versus the 99%. And even at the level of the gut, how that could be affecting uh, 
some systems that you can't really decide away from. It's, it's more of a, about a decision about what you feed yourself before it is a decision about how you're, how you're going to approach your day attitude wise. So we've covered the gambit. Uh, are there any burning questions on anybody's minds that they came to the table with that they didn't get answered this evening that we can, we can make sure we discuss before calling it a night. Okay. Got nose across the board. Nope. All right. Cool. Well, I, I do want to end this with, with two things. Uh, one first, Janet, I hope the surgery goes really well for you. Thank uh, you. You'll be, mm -hmm. you'll be in thoughts and prayers among this group. And I'm sure, I th I'm sure we'd appreciate if you're willing, uh, yeah. just an update on, on how you're doing after, sure. after things go down. Um, and then also you guys get to be the first to hear it. I just got, while we were talking here, I saw the notification pop up on my phone. I just got confirmation that our uh, Better Daily group will be in the app store in 24 hours. So um, I'm Yay. not, I'm not, I'm not putting that out into the public <laughs> yet, but, but for the, for awesome. the group of us who have been, you know, wrestling with a web app, which isn't ideal. I understand it's, it's not a bad place, but web apps have their, have their share of issues um, that it's, I'm just super stoked to be able to do that. Nice. So when, when it does pop up to where you can actually download it, I will send a push notification out to everybody and an email and uh, your membership should carry over just fine from the web app. Like you shouldn't, like once you log in with your username and password, you shouldn't be prompted to, you know, subscribe or anything. So if you have any issues with that, when it, when it comes up, let me know. Um, and I'll make sure that that's fixed on the back end. but I'm excited. And, yeah. and thanks for bearing with us as we, as we work out the kinks and, and make it work right. This is going to be super Congrats. cool. No more, no more browsers. <laughs> Uh, so I'm, I'm sure I'll be even more stoked tomorrow after coffee. It's, it's been a long day. I'm going to go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. Right. This has been powerful and a blast. I appreciate you guys joining me and uh, I hope the faithful 40 goes well for the rest of the time here. We've got 12 more days in it. So keep up the good mm. work. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Right. Good, good night. night guys. Good night. Good night.